we're going to explore the desert ecosystem of southwest Idaho that's home to the highest density of nesting raptors in North America and possibly the entire world. This area is managed by the Bureau of Land Management, which helps protect the area for the birds of prey, as well as other cultural, scientific, and educational resources. And it also gives people a fun place to explore their public lands. Imagine a hawk, an eagle, an owl, a falcon, a vulture, or an osprey. And think about what their feet look like, their beak looks like, what their face looks like. Here we have Little Hawk. And let's talk about those characteristics that make a bird a bird of prey. So if you look at her feet, you might notice that she has these long claws at the tips of her toes. Those are called talons. And they use their talons to catch their food. Little Hawk flies around looking for food, so she has to have excellent eyesight. So all of our hawks and eagles are able to see about eight times as far as we can. Owls are able to see well in the dark. All birds of prey have excellent eyesight. And the third characteristic is their beak. They have a sharp, curved beak. And they use that to tear their food up that they've caught with their talons. So if you have a bird that has sharp talons, a sharp, curved beak, and excellent eyesight, then you have a bird of prey. So little hawk's a Swainson's hawk. These are migratory birds. They're around here in the spring and summer. This is where they nest, and then they go somewhere else in the winter. Swainson's hawks can go as far as Argentina in their migration. And then they come back and do it all over again. Let's go out with my friend Jared, the critter man, and see what other types of animals he can find out here. We have the highest concentration of Paiute ground squirrels here in North America. So there's a very close food source right next to where they, they nest. Being in that close proximity to their food source doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. The western fence lizard. The sagebrush lizard looks a lot, quite a bit like the western fence lizard, only they don't get as big as the western fence lizard. Gopher snakes are a constrictor. They eat other small mammals and reptiles and things, but they, they like to constrict. This is Archimedes. He's a great horned owl. Archimedes was hit by a car, and that's why he only has one eye. A great horned owl is a predator. They're pretty, they're pretty strong as far as their talons and things go. He's got a sharp hooked beak, keen eyesight. One of the main features of his eyesight is that he can see in very low light conditions. He has very large eyes that collect uh, a large amount of light. Uh, this area is really special for raptors. Um, it supports habitat for 23 different species, including hawks, eagles, falcons, owls, and vultures. Many of the raptor species here in the NCA prey on small mammals. The most important of those include black-tailed jackrabbits and Paiute ground squirrels. Reptile species are also important food items, including snakes and lizards. So now let's talk about some of the raptors that live in the NCA. First, we'll start with golden eagles. These are resident species that live in the NCA throughout their year. They nest in the Snake River Canyon. Um, breeding pairs choose a nest site um, and build giant stick nests. On these stick nests, they typically raise one to two young. After about nine weeks, these birds are fully grown and they're able to fly and leave the nest. Prairie falcons are another species that nest in the NCA. They're a migratory bird species, um, which means they only spend the spring and summer months here in the NCA, specifically to raise their young. Uh, instead of building giant stick nests like golden eagles, they find a scrape, which is kind of like a cubby hole in the canyon wall to raise their young. All right, now let's explore the plants that live in the desert ecosystem. We're going to do a desert scavenger hunt together. So we're gonna walk through the sagebrush step and we're going to look for three different kinds of shrubs, something that lives in or on a shrub, find a leaf with hairs, find the largest leaf, 
find at least two kinds of grasses and find a hole dug by an animal. While we were walking around, we were able to see different types of plants that live out here in the desert ecosystem. And we were able to look at them and notice that they were all a little bit different. And maybe now we can think about how these plants survive in the desert. This is a sagebrush. Sagebrush is a very common shrub in Idaho and throughout the West. And sagebrush is a really important species because it provides habitat for all of the small mammals, the insects, the lizards, other reptiles that are so important for the birds of prey species out here. Jackrabbits will make their burrows under sagebrush. The other thing that's really cool about sagebrush is they have very deep roots that extend even taller than I am into the soil and during the really hot summer months, sagebrush can bring water to the surface and then all of the other plants that don't have as deep as roots can utilize that soil water. This is a winter fat and you can see that it totally looks different than a sagebrush. That's a sagebrush. This is a winter fat, but it got its name because about 100 years ago, when there were a lot of sheep ranchers out in the NCA, they would put their sheep out on the NCA for their winter range, and the sheep would eat all of the winter fat and fatten up during the winter, so that's how it got its common name. This is a native bunch grass. We really care about native bunch grasses like rice grass because they provide a good food source for the small mammals that the raptors depend on. This area is covered in the invasive grass, cheatgrass. And cheatgrass has invaded the NCA. And as you can see, it's very easy to pull up because it has very shallow, fine roots. And the reason that we're really concerned about cheatgrass is it has altered the fire cycle in the NCA. So once we have a fire that comes through and kills the native shrubs, cheatgrass really likes fire. It germinates after fire, it produces a ton of seeds, it can utilize all the spring moisture and take over areas. One of the things that BLM tries to do is restore habitat after it's burned. And this is an example of one of the restoration projects we've done. And this is a baby sagebrush that we planted last fall. And our hope is that over time we can put more shrubs back on the landscape, create more habitat, create more cover for all the small mammals, and then hopefully that will help the raptors too. So here we are at the Overlook at Dedication Point, overlooking the Snake River. We're about 400 feet up from the canyon floor. If you look around, you'll notice there's a lot of different geology in the area. So the cliffs you're looking at are made of basalt, which is a type of igneous or volcanic rock that cools above the surface. And it's been laid out in layers from different volcanic activity. So as you look along the canyon, I want you to look for evidence of a volcano and you might spot Sinker Butte, and it is an extinct shield volcano that erupted underwater when this whole area was covered by Lake Idaho. So the way you do a sound map is you find a nice spot to sit, and you're going to record the sounds that you hear. So you can mark yourself on your sound map by drawing an X, and I'm going to take some time and listen, and as I hear the sounds, I'm going to record them and then continue to listen and record the things that you hear. The river, the wind, it's up to you. So what I'd like you to do is next time you're in your yard around your apartment building or your house, or next time you visit your local park to take these activities with you and you can do your own discovery day. Thank you all so much for coming out with us today and learning about the NCA. Although our time today has been short, I hope you guys have learned a little bit about raptors in the NCA as well as their habitat. Be proud that such an amazing place is here in the state of Idaho, and next time, come and see the birds for yourself.